Hello everyone, my name is Joe Scorsone, channel is called Ethernet Wink, and in today's video, I'm going to give you guys something that was asked of me months ago, and I'm just now putting out the video for it. I don't have an excuse, but I do have what you asked me for. I apologize if you can hear the quad or dirt bike or whatever it is outside my house. But, yeah, so we're going to do this like the other videos, where I go through, I show you guys the code, and then I provide a link to it, and, um... Yeah, really quickly, before I show you guys the code, what this strategy actually is, is it's a monthly rebalancing based upon the federal funds rate. And so if you guys don't know what that means, whenever you hear somebody talk about, oh, the interest rate, the interest rate, the interest rate, it's the federal funds rate. And that changes every month when the Fed, uh, is it every month? I have no idea if it's every month, but it changes whenever the Fed has a FOMC meeting, a Federal Open Market Committee and they change the interest rate or don't based on current um, economic indicators, whatever, their opinions, who's paying them off, everything. <laughs> but so whenever the Fed's fund rate is low or near zero, uh, we're going to invest in more companies, 50 to be exact in this example, because it's, and because we can have a broader conviction when interest rates are low, everything just goes to the moon, ideally. And when they're above 0 0.25, we invest in less companies, and every month we rebalance it. So, with that being said, let's get to the code. Um, what if I do that? No, that doesn't help. What if I do this? And then I do... I can't close this. There we go. There it is. Okay, cool. So, it's just three functions. So let's get right to it. So, in our initialize, we just set the start date and our cache. I didn't know that if you don't specify an end date, it just goes to present, which is really nice. It's really handy because you don't have to keep on changing it. But yeah, that's cool. We do have to add an equity. I'm choosing SPY because SPY is forever. You know, we're always going to be able to look at the spy it's never going to go anywhere pretty much if it goes anywhere we're going to have bigger problems than our trading model <laughs> but yeah next thing we have to do is specify what kind of risk-free interest rate model we want to use i don't know how or why there'd be different ones i mean some people use the 10-year yield i don't know whatever i was asked to use the fonc rate so u.s primary credit rate at a given date which is that federal funds rate so we're this is just setting the model now that we did set it, we could store the interest rate in this variable. We just have to get the interest rate at whatever time. This kind of doesn't even really matter. This line right here, we're just initializing it pretty much. Even if it was none or like zero, like we could just kind of initialize it. But why not just initialize it to whatever value? Next, we just have to add our universe, which we're going to get into down here. So we just have to set the settings asynchronous equals true. Why? I don't know. I think that's just a quant connect thing. And then just add our universe. So just add the selection, what kind of model it is, and then the name of it. This schedule on is just scheduling our rebalancing close after the market on a month start. So at the first of every month, we get our rebalance is what this does. Uh, okay. I hate doing that. I can never do it on purpose. Um, well, I suppose if you just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on our inner fundamental filter selection function, right, what are we doing? We're checking to see if our interest rate is less than 0 0.025. This, it, I don't know why it gives it to us like that. It is a percentage, so like I guess, but that's just how you have to write it because if you move the percentage over to the right twice, like it was a percentage, you would have 0 0.025. If that's the case, then our amount is 50. If it's not, then our amount is 10. Amount is just how many stocks we're going to choose. Next, in our course, like our list of stocks that are pretty much, that can be involved in our fundamental selection, we're going to make sure of that. <laughs> we're only going to keep the stocks that they have fundamental data. And so now what I'm doing right here is I'm actually sorting this by liquidity and by fundamentals. So let's go through and see how we sort it by dollar volume by liquidity. We're going to sort the selected stocks. Our key, our lambda, lambda is a crazy annoying thing to explain, 
but it's basically like our function. What function are we using to check? We're using dollar volume, right? That's simple enough. We're checking just to see which ones have the greatest dollar volume, and we need to reverse it because we want the bigger ones in the front. So now we have this list of array of elements, list, whatever. I don't like to go over computer science concepts in this because if you're watching an algorithmic trading video, I assume you know what a list is, how to code, what reverse and sorted means. If not, there's a ton of resources on YouTube I didn't know at one point. So you, you, you can do what you got to do. Um, not a bad place to start, though, if you want to learn how to algorithmic, algorithmically trade. Is that even how to say it? Came to the right place if you're here. So yeah, let's keep going. So now for every object, every ticker pretty much in this, we're going to sort it again. We're actually going to just check something. We're So we're going to only store the tickers if they have fundamental data. Again, just why not? The price is over than 10, and if it has a PE ratio. I got that code from right here. I forgot where I got this sort of by dollar volume code. Really did. You could probably find it in a discussion forum, but you have it here as well. So it had, the price has to be over 10. It has to have a PE ratio and fundamental data. So that's our filtered. Sorted by PE ratio. Lowest PE ratio is in the front. All this line is doing. We're just making sure that whichever ones are undervalued the most, lowest PE ratio, undervalued, right, in theory, um, would be in the front. And then our fundamental symbols is the symbol. And it's just however many we want. So it's either 50 or 10, and then we return that. All right, cool. So now you might notice that we, the only add security we did or add equity we did is spy. That's why doing it like this is so nice because you don't have to add everything. It's still quick when you do a back test. So very nice. So we're doing this line again to make sure we get a fresh interest rate at whatever time we're doing this. We're going to liquidate because ideally we're rebalancing. So li 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 bleh, liquidate everything if you don't have anything in the portfolio, like it's the first time nothing will happen. So cool. And now this self.activesecurities.values, that is how we access this. Pretty simple. So now for every security in there, I don't know if that makes a difference if I get rid of some blue or not. I'll test it right now with you guys. But so for every security, because we have symbols up here, that's why I'm wondering. For every security, we're just going to buy it and we're going to, it's a percentage. Whenever you use set holdings, the second argument is how much of a percent of your portfolio do you want to put on it. So there we go. And then we're just going to plot the interest rate just to see it. So now I'm curious if it'll change everything because I had symbol here or not. We should get an error. Runtime error. Yes. Okay, sweet. So we did need symbol there. So this will work, and it'll give you this back test. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit now. So <laughs> if you can hear my sister, I apologize. But yeah, this is the strategy. Not great, right? 45% uh, win rate, and here's our interest rate. Now, the interesting thing that I found in my testing is that this doesn't look right, even though I'm at 100%. Uh, so let's go in one more. Um, the interesting thing I found was if we simply got the most liquid ones, so let's just call this symbols, and we're going to say symbols gets and then we were to run a test, we would see better performance. Um, just something I noticed in writing this slowly because I didn't even, I remember, I just remember that somebody wanted it, wanted me to have the fundamental analysis in here. So I just figured, boom, P ratio. And you could check for a ton of other things with that. I don't know specifically what kind of information Quantconnect has, but the documentation is here for you. So this is pretty much my me doing my part and giving you this framework. And then you can go through and see how specifically you want to cook it. And so now let's even go through here and look at some of these orders because we see I can only name these two companies on here and spy, of course. It does buy spy. It does include that in there. There would be a way to go through and delete it 
but I think that it's kind of a cool idea to also have a little bit of beta in there. So it hasn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can't name a single company in here. So that's kind of the whole idea around it. And so you see as well, selling worker workhorse here, buying workhorse there. You know, there's definitely ways to improve this, but this is what I'm getting at now is that there's basically no name brand in here. CRMD, DH, I can't name any of these companies off the top of my head. But they're in here. Oh, there's Lyft. I guess there's something. Yeah, besides that, nothing. But seeing this finished quickly as well, we do have a positive return here. Our win rate went up by 5%. And of course, we're making a little bit more. But Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, Apple. Even got GameStop in there and AMC. Look at that, right? But, um, oh my God, I bought it at 117. That's kind of funny. What a black swan you don't even think about. Just buying liquid stuff. That's really cool. That's really funny. But um, that's why you would actually want to have some sort of edge. So that way you don't just buy something overvalued. Yeah, I lost a lot of money on that. Even having stop losses, what you could do as well, is you could say um, self dot add risk management and then maximum drawdown percent per security. You could say no more than a five percent drawdown, and you could also say I'm just going to do it like this so that way I only have to run one more back test. You could say maximum unrealized profit percent per security and let's make this a little bit higher and so now if you were to run this you would ideally keep more capital so because you would just cut a loss earlier than you would have wanted to so when AMC was at 117 and it fell to 77 that's about a 40% loss I want to say off the top of my head Let's go through just be, just while we wait for this to finish. Uh, seventy seven over one seventeen is sixty five, so thirty five percent loss. Little a little too much for me, especially if it's just something as simple as securities, right? Like equity. This is an options, an option strategy. Like, yeah, that's fine, but I would rather not have that happen with simple equities. Of course, it will still mimic your benchmark a little bit. Well, that was kind of funny. It will still mimic your benchmark a little bit, right? Like when the S&P had this big drawdown, of course, liquid names that are in the S&P and holding it up will have a drawdown as well. So, but yeah, even in that, cut our losses. I mean, yeah, cut our losses and double our profit pretty much. And our win rate is lower, but our average win is just almost double our average loss so we can definitely get away with that but yeah i'm not going to take any more of you guys' time 15 minutes you get to learn something new so i hope you guys enjoyed it when i post this i'm going to post it in the discussion form like this so just there you go you have your liquidity your fundamental analysis because that's what i was that's what i was asked for that's what I was asked of me, is how to say that, but there's just a few more bells and whistles off the top of my head that you could add to it. But so, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, my name is Ethernet Wink on YouTube as well as Twitter. I'll put my Twitter in the bio of this video. I also have a business called Prometheus Analytics. We provide trading indicators for people. So check out our Twitter, check out our WAP page. If you're a day trader, a swing trader, we got something for everybody. And right now, if you give us our membership, $30 a month, you can get all 15 indicators that we offer made by yours truly. In the future, we're going to have it a little bit different where people can buy either individual indicators or you can get this package for way more than $30. Just a way to clean things up. But if you want to get it early now, now is your shot. But yeah, link to this discussion forum, my Twitter, my business are all going to be in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one. I have no idea when it will be. But um, yeah, I hope you guys have a good one and happy trading.